And I found um, in my life, especially when going through a lot of stress, uh, whether work-related or relationships or family or all of the above, um, that having a spiritual practice is extremely, extremely important and really helps to steady you. So if you're watching this and you're interested in how to create a spiritual practice, just want to share some ideas and um, you know, then you can look into each further to see what works for you. Um, so first of all, as a yoga teacher for many decades and a practitioner, because I've taught, I teach on and off. It's not like I teach steadily, but I practice steadily. And so one thing that first comes to mind is if you're under a lot of stress, like a lot of stress, I would add a physical spiritual practice. Okay, so some things like Tai Chi, um, Qigong, or, um, or running could actually literally be your spiritual practice as long as you don't do it in excess because it's really important. Um, and I've seen, especially women who they are under a lot of stress and so they may become extremely physically active, but it can then further imbalance you and Im Im imbalance your hormonal cycles and so on. But so if you're under a lot of stress, what I would do is add in physical activity. That's really, really important because the idea is from the um, Ayurvedic tradition, which is, comes out of India, that if you're very, very stressed, you're going to tend to be very rajasic. Rajas is like, like active and almost just jittery and, and um, you know, like how you get if you have too much coffee. So in that sense, sense, if you're wound up, do some physical activity, again, not to excess, right? And then you would want to do something that's more calming. But when somebody is very, very physically wound up, to try to get them to say, sit and meditate, it won't work. And I, I know I said this in another one of my videos, but of course you, you have not necessarily seen every video. So of course, repetition is important. Um, so what I'm saying is if you are very physically stressed and you could feel like tension in your body and as I'm making this it's springtime and that's the most common time to feel the muscles and and a sense of tension in the body because the liver energy is rising and it'll create that will feel pent up and will tend to be a little more aggressive uh, and to be uh, more easily irritated around the springtime and so as I said some sort of physical activity will give you an outlet so Qigong uh, tai Chi or even running, hiking, especially something in nature um, and especially if it's spring it's nice being out in nature with the greenery that'll help nourish the liver and nourish that energy. So now you know that could really be your spiritual practice. It could be running three times a week for a set amount of time um, and then as I said I would then recommend an additional practice that is more about stillness. So then, it, so if you're running or doing something very physically active, maybe then balance it with Tai Chi, which is much more slow, slow moving, and which works with the subtle energy or prana in the body. And basically that's what, that's like our life force. In the West, we miss that. We don't tend to talk about that. The only reason we in the West talk about uh, prana is because of yoga, right? From the Eastern tradition, that's brought in this idea of a subtle energy, uh, but in every other culture in the world, especially long-standing cultures, they have a word for, I think like even in Hawaiian it's like mana. There's a, there's a word that conveys life force, life energy, whether in nature or in us. Okay, So a uh, spiritual practice then that would be more meditative and that can also really really help with stress. I'm only saying don't try to just sit and meditate if you know you're really wound up. Um, that won't work because you'll be too agitated and your mind will just race. So if you'd like to try meditation, that's great, but do even some stretches or something physical before meditating. Okay, that's really key. A lot of people don't know that. So you'll be going from a state that is called rajasic and it's like, like I said, it's up here. You can't go to sitting right away. You have to basically like bring yourself down to a level of calmness. So you could just do that with some stretching or some Tai Chi and then add in meditation. So now if you want to add meditation into your practice as part of a spiritual practice, there are many types of meditation. Um, 
And especially as meditation is getting more popular in the West, you know, it's like anything. We tend to, in the West, take something and almost um, take it to the extreme. And, and um, I can't, the word I want to use is like proliferate it, meaning you'll see a meditation for this and a meditation for that. In actuality, there aren't that many types of meditation. They, they fall into different categories. Um, but don't be confused by the fact that, you know, there's a zillion videos on this type of meditation and that type of meditation. The best meditation to start with and that is, um, will benefit you across the board is breath awareness meditation. And I'm, I think I have that somewhere here as a free video. Um, and you can also uh, work with me and I can teach it to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, via Skype. And so wherever you are, we can, we can work on that and you can ask questions and so on. So mindfulness of the breath meditation is the basic one because your breath is always with you, okay? So don't, what I'm saying is don't get confused because yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make this up. There's like a meditation for this and a meditation for that. Really, if you have the breath awareness meditation, it's, it'll serve you in all different ways, okay? So meditation, I think, should definitely be part of your spiritual practice. And you even, um, I would say 10 minutes would be the minimum. You could literally start with five minutes, but aim for 10 minutes of practice three times a week, three or four times a week would be great. Three or four, I would say. Um, what other spiritual practices? You could start doing yoga. Um, there's so many, there really are different types of yoga. Um, you know, there is, well, Anusara is still around. There's Kripalu, which is the tradition I was um, first um, certified in. There's Ashtanga, which is a very physical, very flowing. Vinyasa, which is sort of a derivative of Ashtanga. So there are many different types of yoga. Um, maybe I'll make another video about that. But so there's no real excuse. Even if you don't have a lot of money, go to your library or got, just find a YouTube video for beginners, you know, yoga for beginners, try different types, uh, see whose instruction you really like and who gives you clear enough instruction, okay? So there's yoga, there's meditation, especially breath awareness, there's physical activity if you're very um, wound up. Um, those are really the three, I feel like, in terms of a of sort of starting a spiritual practice. And I'm talking, when I say spiritual practice also, I should define that. I really mean something that connects you to spirit. So you don't just feel isolated and alone in this um, mechanistic view that we had in the West until very recently, like you're just a separate being amongst sort of a dead universe. That is just not the case. And so a spiritual practice, and of course prayer, I didn't mention, um, because I know probably a lot of you are already using prayer, but you could potentially set aside time. Also, and yeah, I actually definitely do want to include prayer, uh, prayer mantra and or just reading spiritual text of your tradition. That, you know, absolutely set aside 10 minutes, do a quiet reading, reflect on it, maybe pick out a phrase from it, repeat it to yourself, and then throughout the day recollect that phrase. So. You don't need money to come up with a spiritual practice. You really don't. Um, so I'm just encouraging you to, if you're under stress, to create a little practice for yourself. It, and I say little because it does not have to be this elaborate thing, okay? Literally 10 minutes, and especially if you could do every day, would be really, really helpful. And you will find uh, really grounding. So like I said, when I was going through the worst of my work trauma, um, when I was teaching, that's what I left out. I, for the most part, dropped a lot of the practices during the height of my stress, and I really see now that that is like the worst thing to do, but I think that happens. That's sort of a common reaction because we tend to focus on the stressor, like what's stressing us, instead of the self-care. And that's a huge part of why I'm even here today, is to just really encourage you um, to practice self-care and that it does not require a lot of money if money is tight and then of course if you do have money you can do things also like get a massage you know and and get things that do cost but don't let money be an excuse in terms of taking care of yourself um, 
There's so much you can do, and a spiritual practice will be a way for you, like I said, to, to self-care, to provide self-love, and to stay healthier and happier no matter what is going on for you. So if you would like to find out more about what I do, click the links below. And if you have any questions or comments, and please do give a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. Namaste. should go through in upcoming videos and just talk a little bit more individually about different spiritual practices that you can do. Namaste. See you soon. Bye-bye.